everybody, and welcome to Travel Fuels Life, a show where we share stories, tips, and inspiration to help you start living that travel lifestyle. I'm your host, Drew Hanish, and I am in Duluth, Minnesota, and here it is, May 19th, and it's snowing. I just drove through a whole bunch of snowflakes on my way to this beautiful marina area that I can't go out and actually look at because I'd be soaked to the bone and it's cold outside and it's supposed to be sunny tomorrow morning and warming up a bit. So I'm going to go explore some of Duluth tomorrow. I haven't been here since I was a kid, so I don't really remember much of anything about this area except my cousin who I just remember we went to a restaurant where he ate hamburger a la mode and that was the strangest thing I had ever heard of but apparently that was a thing so um, Duluth I'm coming to see you tomorrow when it warms up a little bit and the sun comes out but right now a little nasty so it's perfect time for me to get into doing the podcast with you guys and I have a special interview that I want to present for you and if you've been listening the last few weeks, you know that my 50th state, I've conquered 49 of them. Hawaii was number 49. I got there in January, and number 50 is North Dakota. And it's very interesting that when I was doing all of this this planning for what kind of trips I was going to take this year, North Dakota is a tough one to figure because it's kind of out of the way for a guy who lives in South Carolina. I have to figure out how am I, you know, there's nothing that you're going through to get there. It's just, it's got to be a destination kind of place for me. And I kept trying to think of what was a destination that I could plan to go see in North Dakota. I mean, I could go try to find film spots from the movie Fargo or something like that. So I got online and I started looking around to see what kind of information I could get. And usually what I'll do when I start scouting out an area is I'll type into Google uh, Instagrammable places in North Dakota or in Fargo. And that'll help me find some pictures that might lead me to some things that would be interesting to go look at since I love doing photography. Or I'll go look at TripAdvisor and I'll say, okay, what's popular? What are sites to see when you're in a particular town? Or I'll just do Google searches, maybe look for a chamber of commerce. In this particular case, I ran across the Fargo Moorhead Convention Center website. It's a convention center and visitors bureau in Fargo, North Dakota. And I started looking at the site and I almost fell out of my chair that I was reading this thing called the best for last club. And I thought best for last, wait a second, I got to read about this and call it serendipity or whatever. I mean, I was supposed to go to North Dakota in 2011, had it all planned out, was going to go see the Roger Maris museum in Fargo. I was doing a Midwest baseball tour. It was perfect for me. Go see a bunch of baseball games across the Midwest and then go check out the Roger Maris Museum because he played his high school ball in that area in Fargo. And tornadoes were coming through the morning that I woke up and was planning on going through. So I had to change my plans all around. Frustrating. And I ended up not going to North Dakota and now all of a sudden it was going to end up being my last state. And here the visitor center had this best for last club. So I had to find out more information about it. First of all, because I wanted to know what it was all about, but also kind of get the thought process behind it, right? How, what state says, don't come here, <laughs> don't come here until it's your last state. And then that way you can get certification you can get in a become a member of the club that sort of thing so i reached out to danny riley she is the visitor experience manager there and i asked her if she would be fine coming on the podcast and she said absolutely so i'm going to play for you my interview with her that i did almost a week ago and then we'll play a little bit of my swearing in ceremony as well and then Afterwards, I'm going to fill you in a little bit on what happened during my three days in the Rough Rider State. I actually had to go look up what their state 
um, it's not really a state slogan, I guess, but it's more of a, a just a name, a, a secondary name. Like, you know, Michigan is the Great Lake State and, um, you know, South Carolina is the Palmetto State and you, the Lone Star State is Texas and so on and so forth. So Rough Rider State, which, of course, if you know anything about American history, that was uh, Teddy Roosevelt was a Rough Rider and um, his Rough Riders went to Cuba and so on and so forth. So history for another day. But so, you know, anyway, that's what, and you'll see Teddy Roosevelt stuff all across the state. We'll get a little bit into that. I also will tell you on the website where you'll be able to go and look at some of the pictures and some of the places that I went because I was pleasantly surprised at what I found in North Dakota. And I'm going to give you a couple of the places that I went. Things that I think are worthy of you not neglecting North Dakota, but definitely putting it on your radar as a place that you should see sometime in your life. So we'll get to that in just a little while. But right now, let's get into our interview. It's a, it was a fun little discussion, and I think you're going to enjoy this. This is my talk with Danny Riley from the Fargo Moorhead Visitors Bureau. All right, Danny, uh, I want to say uh, welcome. And uh, actually, it's it's you that should be saying welcome, <laughs> right? I'm, I'm in North Dakota now, finally. Yep, welcome to your last state. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting. You know, it's funny because when I crossed the border last night, I was, I, I, it was almost a melancholy feeling. It's like for years I've been telling people, I got to get to North Dakota. I got to get to North Dakota. Yeah. And it's been something I could trumpet and say, you know, I'm almost to my 50th state. Yeah. And then I was thinking, I'm not going to be able to say that yeah, anymore. Now what? Yeah. Now what are you going to do? It's like the whole thing of North Dakota is going to come out of my whole vernacular. I yeah. don't know what to do. So, um, so I'm here. And um, so far I got a chance to kind of wander around downtown Fargo this morning and mm -hmm. see a little bit about that. And so I thought it'd be fun to talk with you guys, not only about, you know, me now doing a trip across North Dakota and trying to figure out what I'm going to do while I'm here, but also talk about your best for last uh, program that, that you do. Mm -hmm. Would we call it a program? We call it a... Um, it's a club. A club. Yeah, it's a club. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. And this is, I'm apparently not the only person who, for some reason, has North Dakota as their last state. Yeah. So um, the club started about five years ago. Um, it's called the Best for Last Club. Um, and basically, it's for anyone who saves North Dakota for last. Mm -hmm. So um, we're up to about... Tw we're almost to 2,500 members. Wow. Um, and yeah, it's fun. I mean, you get a t-shirt and a certificate and we take your picture, um, <laughs> kind of make a big deal about it. So uh, it's always, it's fun. We have um, fun with it, kind of just encourage people to, um, you know, come and take your picture and uh, kind of get to tell you about all the fun things to do in Fargo as well. So. Yeah. So, yeah. so where did this idea come about? How long have you been doing this? Um, so the travel ambassadors who work at the visitor center here, um, they were finding that a lot of people were coming in and saying, this is my last state. Um, and it was kind of like, oh, that's great. Congratulations. Uh, but wanted to do something more. Um, and so they kind of came together with our marketing department and came up with the best for last club. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of how it came about. And now uh, we get <laughs> some calls like, I was there in 1999 and North Dakota was my last <laughs> state. Like, <laughs> can I get a t-shirt? And so we do send them out um, the t-shirts and date the certificates to when they actually got into North Dakota. So, okay. And kind of encourage them to come back and see how much it's changed since then. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of where it started. So if somebody was coming from, let, let's say I have a trip later this year and I'm going to Montana. Yeah. And I could have snuck in by going to Theodore Roosevelt National Park and come in the other side of the state. Yep. What, what, what do I do then? Yeah. So uh, as much as we encourage you to come to Fargo, because that's mm -hmm. where we want you to come visit. Um, if you do that and you call us, we will give you the we'll send you the T-shirt. OK. <laughs> yeah. All right. it, it, I mean, it's marketing. And if, <laughs> if they're wearing the T-shirt somewhere else, that that's better for us than right. not. So. 
Um, so yeah. why does North Carolina, uh, North, see, yeah, I, see, I there grew we up go. in North Carolina, <laughs> so it's, it's the first thing out of my head when I say North. Yeah. Um, so why is North Dakota, do you think, the last place that people usually end up going? Yeah, so we hear a lot just that it's um, kind of out of the way. It's not really on the way too much. Um, you can go through South Dakota and it saves you some time. Um, but we have a lot to offer here in North Dakota too. Um, Fargo itself is a growing city. There's a lot to do here, a lot of um, like nightlife and stuff that you don't expect out of a North Dakota um, city. And then uh, of course, Theodore Roosevelt National Park. Um, so there is a lot to do here, a lot to see. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I think uh, everyone knows about, um, you know, Mount Rushmore. So they choose to go maybe through South Dakota if they're going across the country. Uh, yeah, so I think that's kind of why. Yeah. Um, it's just a little out of you the way. You just got stuck in a spot yeah. that nobody can. Uh, yeah. All right, so I'm going to pull a little quiz on you right now. Okay. Because <laughs> being from North Carolina and then living in South Carolina for some time, mm -hmm. and then I hear national people or I hear, you know, on, on the news, giving the wrong state for a location sure. yeah. and and whenever I talk to somebody about I'm going to North Dakota they're like oh so you're going to Mount Rushmore yep. I'm like uh no that's no, not wrong a, Dakota yeah yeah, yeah yeah um so then they're like uh well uh, the corn palace is that yeah. the, no no the corn Still palace right wall drug no that's not there um so I I, I thought it'd be uh interesting because I was going to ask some people back in in North Carolina mm -hmm. you know tell me what is in North Dakota and see okay. if they could figure yeah. it out. So how about we, we turn the tables here and we say, okay, is it in North Carolina or South Carolina? Okay, I can right. try. Okay, here we go. Uh, Myrtle Beach. North Carolina. Nope, it's in South Carolina. That's South Carolina. <laughs> you got it. You got it on the side. Okay, the Carolina Hurricanes hockey team plays in Raleigh, which is in? North Carolina. Okay, excellent. You got that. Yep. Uh, the Carolina Panthers play in Charlotte. Where is Charlotte? Charlotte is in North Carolina. It is in North Carolina. Yep. Okay. I've heard national broadcasters when the Panthers first started playing saying Charlotte, South, South Carolina. Carolina. Oh, yes. goodness. All right. Now, this is a tricky one that even people who live in the Carolinas may not be able to okay. answer. During the American Revolutionary War, one of the turning point battles was at Kings Mountain. Do you know which state Kings Mountain is in? I'm going to guess... Okay. South Carolina. And you would be right. Okay. But most everybody will probably get it wrong because yeah. when you're driving up I-85, the exit is in North Carolina. Okay. And, and you drive south down. over the border to get to it. Okay. There, there you go. There you go. <laughs> it was a total guess. Yes. <laughs> so uh, give give me something, North Dakota, South Dakota. Let's see if I can figure out which one it is. Okay. Um, Lake Sakakawea. Woo. <laughs> It's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. Is it something I want to visit? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, all right. North Dakota. Yep. You're right. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that's ding, ding, cheating. Ding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Okay. Yep. yep. Um, Custer National Park. Ooh. Uh, I'm gonna say South Dakota. Yeah, yeah, okay. it's, but it's the Black Hills area. Okay. Yeah. Um, Minot. Minot. I'm going there tomorrow, okay. so I know that that is <laughs> That's uh, North cheating. Dakota. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, let's see, Williston. Williston. I've heard of Williston. I don't know it's there. North Dakota. Yep. Okay. That's where the oil, if you heard about all the oil boom, oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. fracking, that okay. was kind of one of the main hubs for that. Uh, okay. So, and where, whereabouts yeah. is that? That is in the northwest area of um, North Dakota. Okay. So. so while I'm driving up to Regina, because I'm, yeah. I'm actually doing uh, my last two Canadian provinces on okay. this trip also. Okay, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, might, you could go through Williston. Um, you could also just go north at Minot. So okay. either way. All right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so I guess <laughs> sort of successful yeah. there. I, so, so let's talk about some of the stuff that's in North Dakota. If somebody's coming here, uh, what other places would you suggest would be interesting to go to? Yeah, so um, obviously Fargo has a lot 
here, mm -hmm. um, especially the downtown area is really fun. Um, we have the North Dakota State University um, Bison. They've won seven national titles. Seven? Yep. Wow. Yeah. So okay. um, those games are really fun. They tailgate rain, snow, or shine. So that's, that's pretty where fun. Carson Wentz came from. That's where Carson it? Wentz okay. came from. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So uh, that's those are all fun things to do here. Um, and we can get into more of that later maybe. Okay. And, um, and then, so traveling west, mm -hmm. uh, you'll go through um, Jamestown and be the first kind of big stop that you could make. Um, and that has the world's largest buffalo. Okay. Um, and a buffalo museum. So you can go and stand next to this huge buffalo and take a picture. Um, they also have white albino buffalo there that you can see, um, uh -huh. which are really, um, you know, important to the Native American culture. So they have a few there too as well. Um, and then keep going, you end up in Bismarck, which is where our capital is. Okay. So um, there's the Capitol building. Um, they have a heritage center, which has, it's free to go through and it has a lot of history about like Lewis and Clark and um, kind of how how they came here, um, like dinosaurs, all that kind of stuff, geological areas of North Dakota. And I was gonna say, there's a lot of Lewis and Clark stuff Yeah. Uh, between North and South Dakota, I think, has the Sacagawea uh, Memorial. And yep. uh, North, yeah. North Dakota is like a whole drive between Minot and um, Bismarck. Yeah, so um, just north of Bismarck, on your way to Minot, you could um, stop at the Lewis and Clark Interpretive Center. Um, and that's actually uh, right where they stayed their first winter. So that's kind of why it, um, North Dakota was important to them. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, that is pretty cool. You can see kind of their journey and all of that there. Um, and then let's see, so west of Bismarck, um, there is uh, Salem Sioux, which is the world's largest Holstein cow. Okay. Um, and then she's up on a hill, which is, you can see kind of every, all of North Dakota up there, which I, is I really was gonna nice. say, you're dispelling a, a myth that there are no hills in <laughs> yeah. North Dakota. No, there's a hill. <laughs> um, you don't do yeah. like Michigan and call it a mountain. <laughs> yeah, no, not, I wouldn't call it a mountain, no. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so in August, um, we have like one of the biggest sunflower, um, we produce a lot of sunflower seeds here, so, um, if you go up and see Salem Sioux, you can see all the sunflowers out uh, from there and it's really pretty. Okay. Um, and then uh, finally, um, there's Theodore Roosevelt National Park um, and the North Dakota Badlands. So mm. um, different from South Dakota, they're a lot greener, um, bluffs, less like, you know, large hills. Right. They're kind of bluffs. Um, and so it's really pretty out there. They have um, the cabin is the visitor center that um, Theodore Roosevelt actually ranched in. Oh, okay. Uh, they have the Medora musical, um, which is every night of the summer. Um, and it's kind of, it has like a country theme sort of. And then they always bring out someone that looks like Theodore Roosevelt on a horse. Um, and it's really pretty. It's in a amphitheater looking, overlooking all the Badlands. So okay. that's a really, really fun too. And you mentioned summer. When yeah. <laughs> when is summer in North Dakota? <laughs> it depends on the year. It really does. Yeah. Um, sometimes right now it'll be really hot, but obviously it's not the best weather today. Um, I mean, it might get up I'm, to the I'm liking it. So, it's not so, too yeah. bad. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's cooler than yeah. where I'm from, but sure. it, yeah. it works. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, summer, usually I would say by June, it's it's summer. Okay, so, and then it's yeah. uh, and then it's fall when in August? Uh, no, probably middle of September. Middle of September. So, okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. Both our spring and our falls are very short. Whether yeah. it's like long winters, usually long winters, or long summers, it just depends on the year. I was so. going to say the other reason why I hadn't come to North Dakota is because. The last time I was telling you before the podcast mm -hmm. that I went to Minneapolis before this, and I've been to Target Field twice, yep. and I was doing a Midwest baseball tour, and I was going to go to the Roger Maris Museum, and okay. this was in 2012. <laughs> okay. And the day that I was going to head up there, um, tornadoes. 
Oh. And I, oh, I, I can't, I can't go. And it's funny because last night I went to my hotel here in Fargo, and I was telling the woman at the front desk, she's from Minnesota, and uh, I said, yeah, I tried to get here back in 2012, but there were tornadoes coming mm-hmm. through. She said, ah, the weather strikes again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty, uh, you know, normal story around here, whether it's snow or. Yeah, I, tornado is not a huge thing that happens, but yeah, I suppose like, <laughs> bad luck maybe. <laughs> so, so best for last. Um, mm-hmm. When I was in Minneapolis, I was, uh, and there must be a nice little uh, uh, crossing of people from North Dakota and mm-hmm. Minnesota because uh, I was in a drugstore getting some suntan lotion, and I started talking to a guy, and he said. Oh, uh, you're, where are you headed to? And I said, I'm going to North Dakota. And he said, Oh, you gotta, you gotta go see the buffalo, the big okay, thirty foot yeah. buffalo. I said, Yes, it's on my agenda. I'm, I'm going through there. Yeah. And he said, Oh, you. Uh, I said, Yeah, and it's my fiftieth state. And he said, Oh, you're saving the best for last, right? Oh, there you go. So yeah, it's a, it's a theme. Yeah. And then I heard yesterday at the hotel, the the woman said, Oh, fiftieth state. I hear that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So either your promotion's really working <laughs> or people are just, <laughs> just using the what everyone's already saying, I guess. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So. Um, so let's talk a little bit uh, again about the club. You're going to take me actually through the the, the ceremony. Yes. Yep. And mm-hmm. so um, uh, tell me who who's the youngest person and you probably don't know exactly ages, but I would think mm-hmm. that most of the people who are coming through here are, are probably in their 50s or 60s or 70s. Yep. Yeah. So um, we were actually just talking about this. Our youngest person to ever join the club was nine. Um, wow. And they were homeschooled and their family just took them um, across the state. So they had like five kids or something and he was nine. So <laughs> that's the youngest one. And then our oldest um, was 99. Mm-hmm. And so and he came to um, here, I think, last year or maybe two years ago. Um, and yeah, but I would say like the retirement age, about like 65 to 70 is probably where most of them. OK, that's how old they are. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> when they have time to travel and yes. see everything. So you have a, I also noticed you have a walk of fame. Yes. Outside. So uh, who, who are some, I saw Def Leppard and Metallica stuck out to yeah. me because I've seen both of them in yeah. concert. But. Um, so yeah, we have um, the Walk of Fame, which is handprints uh, of famous people who come to North Dakota. Um, we have, uh, yeah, Def Leppard and Metallica. You've got we have, a lot of country people I yeah, saw Yeah, I was going to say Garth, Garth Brooks is out there. Yeah. Um, I think Billy Ray Cyrus. Uh-huh. Uh yeah, I, we haven't had a new one since the Abbott Brothers, which was about five years ago. It's just a little bit tougher to get celebrities to come in. <laughs> right. Um, not that they're not coming here, just to come and do the handprints. So. so when they're coming here, are they actually performing here, or are they just on their way through? Yeah, so most of them were performing. Um, like, we had Pink here last weekend. Ah. Um we didn't get her handprints, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, and then Kelsey Ballerino, Cal- Ballerini was here this last weekend too. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, I think most of them were performing. We do have like Bill Gates. He just was here, so uh, um, yeah. And what was he for coming here for? Um, well, we have uh, Doug Burgum, who's our our governor. Mm-hmm. Um, he. Uh, owned a company called Great Plains Software, um, and it sold to Microsoft. And okay. so that was why he was here. I, so it was a few, it was, I don't know how long ago, but probably 15 years ago or so. so yeah. yeah. I wish I could have tapped him on the shoulder while he was here, because as I was driving up from Minneapolis, you know, they have the new billboards now that are all electronically yep. driven, mm-hmm. and it had a Windows error on it. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not a good advertisement yeah, for, good. For, for Windows, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, all right, well, let's talk a little bit about uh, F- uh, Fargo itself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so this is the Visit Fargo and Moorhead uh, Visitor Center. Yep. And so Fargo... Talk about it's like when I walked around downtown this morning, I noticed a lot of 
late 19th century, early 20th century buildings down mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. I love the fact that as I was walking down Broadway, you could actually read little bits about the history on those um, yep. posts that you have down there. Mm-hmm. And then you had some art as well on some very interesting yeah. features around town. Can you tell a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, we have a very active arts partnership here. Um, a lot of artists, a lot of great um, like murals uh, have popped up in the past couple of years. Um, and then, like you said, there was um, the, they just put art wraps on electrical boxes mm-hmm. and they have little history about who made them and um, kind of what that's all about. So that those are a really cool addition to our downtown as well. Um, we have the Fargo Theater down there, which is a 1920s Art Deco theater. Mm-hmm. Um, and it has the marquee that kind of, it's the most um, photographed spot in the in the town. So everyone goes down there to take their prom pictures or wedding photos, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, we just have a lot of, um, like our Plains Art Museum is a free art museum in the downtown area. Um, and that's the largest art museum between Minneapolis and Seattle, accredited okay. art museum. So, um, and they do a lot of like Native American or local art. Um, so that's pretty cool down there as well. Um, and then, uh, outside of downtown, um, we have uh, the um, Island Park. We have a lot of parks in the area okay. as well. Um, and then we have a lot of parks along like the river, which separates North Dakota and Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Um, and in Lindenwood Park, which is um, right along the river, uh, there's actually a pedestrian bridge that you can cross over. So you can be in North Dakota and Minnesota at the same time. Okay. Which is kind of fun. I did that. <laughs> I did that over the First Avenue Bridge, okay, which uh, yep. I was expecting more fanfare. There wasn't yeah. a welcome sign. I did see City Hall. Yeah, City Hall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They just they just built that City Hall um, along the river. They ended up putting a diversion down there because um, the the river does flood. Um, since it's a newer river, it um, hasn't been able to kind of. Um, carve its way yeah. there yet, so it does flood. So once they put the di- or the big dike there, then they're able to build the city hall. So. And I saw a train depot. I saw two mm-hmm. train depots. Mm-hmm. One is a bicycle shop. Yes. Was that <laughs> once a train depot, or did they just build it to look that way? It was a train depot. Yep, there okay. was one there, and then there's one on Main Avenue, which is now our park district. Mm-hmm. Um, and they. Uh, I don't know if you saw the greetings from Fargo I did. mural there yep. too. Got, got the picture in front yeah, of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're kind of making all of that a little prettier and nicer down there. So yeah. Yeah. So how long have you been here? Um, I've lived here for about four years um, and I started at the CBB um, part time as a travel ambassador mm-hmm. four years ago. So, okay. Yeah. When was the first time you came to Fargo? Well, I, it's kind of cheating. I I grew up in the Twin Cities, but my family is from here. So we, um, I probably was in Fargo, when you know, close after I was born. Right. Um, see family and whatnot, but. So you've seen changes. Yeah. I mean, what are the big changes that you've seen here? Yeah. So it's funny. I've lived here for four years, and I already sound like a grandma driving around saying, <laughs> "Oh, this this wasn't here when I moved here," right. that kind of thing. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, the downtown, um, my parents moved back here about 10 years ago. And since then, it's like, I, there's so much to do down there. It's just grown enormously. Um, our West West Fargo, which is the city, obviously, to the west of Fargo, um, is the fastest growing city um, and the fifth largest city in North Dakota now. Um, and so it's it just keeps growing. I mm-hmm. mean, there's new developments down there all the time. New restaurants popping up almost daily. It feels like, <laughs> um, yeah. So a lot, a lot of growth. Okay, definitely. And yeah, the our Broadway and Main Avenue, the two main strips through town that people would want to walk along, or yeah. So that's definitely our downtown area is Broadway, um, and then Main is kind of growing up as well. There's a lot of um, new restaurants, um, tap rooms, breweries. We have seven. Or we have eight breweries um, and uh, nine different locations, so okay. a couple double double location breweries. Um, new newly downtown is a pix. It's called Pixeled Brewery, um, and it has it's like uh, video games and 
and a brewery, so that's yeah. kind of fun. Um, and then across the street is a cidery, Wild Terra Cidery, which is built in an old horse stable. So that's pretty cool. Okay. Um, so now yeah. it's, we're enticing everybody to show up, but your promotion <laughs> kind of says don't show up. Yes. <laughs> until you've done everywhere else. Mm -hmm. Is that how does that how does that work? I mean, it's got it. It probably feels a little awkward. Yeah. So. Um, I mean, we keep finding that a lot of people are already saving North Dakota for, you know, one of the last states. So yeah. it's kind of like, um, do save us for last <laughs> and then we can kind of celebrate with you. You know, it's a little right. more fun if um, you do that. So, yeah, it is. I mean, it's a little weird because you're like, don't come now. Wait till <laughs> yeah, go and, to Hawaii first. <laughs> and, and hopefully they don't get stuck like I do yeah. waiting for 10 years with my, with two states yeah. left on there. I was I was trying to figure out how I could fly through Fargo to get to uh, Hawaii, but yeah. um, to, to knock my last two off. But, OK, so the, the last question is. Because we've talked about this on social media a little bit mm -hmm. amongst other travelers. What constitutes actually having been to a state? How do you knock it off your list? Can you can you just land in the airport and then go to the next? Because Or I've probably flown over North Dakota yeah. many times in the air, but, yep. but not stopped here. Yeah. Um, so we kind of leave that up to uh, the visitor's discretion. Okay. Um, I personally would say you have to at least do something in in the state. Um, so that that would be my my goal. But um, yeah, I I mean I wouldn't say that if you landed if you had a layover in Dallas that you'd been to Texas. But, right. I mean some people might say that and that's, <laughs> that's fine with us. So, yeah. 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 So. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of like I wrote down all fifty states, and mm -hmm. I tried to figure out what activity that I did in each in state each one, to yep. justify it. Mm -hmm. And there are interesting states like Alabama that mm -hmm. I've probably been through Alabama fifty times. Yeah, I've slept in Alabama. Yeah, I've never actually gone to Alabama to do something. Doing something it's there. It's always yep. driving through. Yeah. So it's it's like part of me goes, I need to give a little bit more time to that. Mm -hmm. I'll mm -hmm. probably have done more in North Dakota than I've done yeah. in <laughs> Alabama by the time I'm done with <laughs> yeah. it. And I live two states away. Yes. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, we did have um, on Friday, we had a couple join the Best for Last Club and they um, needed their criteria was to stay overnight mm -hmm. in, a, in each state um and when they booked their um trip here they accidentally <laughs> booked um a room in moorhead which is in minnesota oh, no. <laughs> so <laughs> they had to wait an extra day to come over and and join wow. the club because that, that was their criteria yeah so, yeah all right but yeah so it's up to it's up to you guys to decide what 50 means to you so awesome well mm -hmm. I am ready to get initiated into the club awesome. and and make this thing official. Okay, great. All right, excellent. Let's do it. <laughs> well, great. And uh, that thanks so much for the interview time as yeah, well. And uh, so I'll I'll record us separately uh, going through and doing that. All right. So it is your 50th okay. state. What's that? North Dakota is your 50. 50th state. This is number Yay. 50. I am. Congratulations. Uh, I've been saving it for 10 years. Wow. Well, you're here, now, so. and here I am. Yeah, so you run a sign in right there. All right. And you will get you a certificate. This feels so official. It is official. <laughs> I like it's it. the real thing now. And we, we were doing our, our podcast episode, and we didn't talk once about the wood chipper. So we're going to have to go over and, over and video the wood, the wood chipper. chipper. Yes. Okay, what size T-shirt do you wear? Extra large. Extra large. How long did it take for me to... I'm going to grab that T-shirt. There we go. So uh, how long? 51 years. Favorite thing about North Dakota. I just got here. Hmm. That it's my 50th state? Um, I'd say Fargo downtown was very nice. And there you go. And so, now we have a t-shirt Look at you. that. So Excellent. That is a pretty nice t-shirt. Nice. Look at that. <laughs> I am official. All right. And you said you would take your photo. Okay. So we, 
Uh, there's your certificate Excellent. and your sticker. And we'll take it over with our best for last sign over there. And I will get my iPad and we'll take it right over by that sign. Excellent. And uh, let's go visit the wood chipper. How about that? So the one thing that I guess, is, would you say this is what Fargo is probably most famous for? Yes. <laughs> uh, nice. I was a little worried it might be an actual real foot, but it seems to be fine. And then there's one out front. So the one out front is a... Uh, we call it the stunt double. Okay. Yeah. Was it used in the movie? No. This one was. Um, that one was created before we got this real one. Okay. All right. And did you guys say, do this movie in Fargo so that we have something to talk about at the Visitor Center? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. All right, cool. And then we'll take your photo over. Over here? All right. See? Man. And uh, I guess we'll get a little close-up there of, the, uh, of my certification. Now everyone will know I've made it through all 50. See, I bet they don't do this in Saskatchewan at all. <laughs> so so the, other, the other question is, um, what was the, what do you think most people's 49th state is? Um, Hawaii or Alaska. Okay, all right. I was lucky, I got Alaska out of the way early on. One of those two. Yeah, yeah, Hawaii was 49 for me. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I tend to have to go portrait. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Something, something about this uh, tall frame I have. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Excellent. Good. So it was ten years ago that you went to Hawaii. Or <sighs> no. Ten years A actually, uh, I said I'm gonna knock them both out in the same year. So in January, I went to Hawaii, and here I am in. <laughs> May wow. doing this, so, so yeah. Yeah. Congratulations again. Th really thank you. Thank you so much. Well, that was a lot of fun, and definitely something that's a memory that I'll take with me for a lifetime from Fargo. And so now I am an official member of that Fargo Moorhead Best for Last Club. And if you want more information on that, I've gone ahead and put on the show notes page links to their website and also some information about some of the other places that Danny mentioned that I'm not mentioning in my blog post that I did on North Dakota. Now, let me tell you a little bit about that blog post. If you go to travelfuelslife.com slash North Dakota, you're going to find pictures from my three-day trip across the state of North Dakota. And I'm telling you, there's some really cool places. So the first picture you're going to see is a picture of the visitor center where they have a painted buffalo that you can check out. Actually, bison. You know, we, we call them buffalo, but there's actually no buffalo in the United States or in North America. They are actually bison if you want to get technical about it. But you'll hear buffalo all over the place. So you'll see that. You'll see the uh, wood chipper inside of the visitor center, but also on the outside, the stunt double, which you'll see in the background on that picture and the sign for the Walk of Fame. You'll also see me and Danny disposing of the evidence with the wood chipper and you'll see a foot there i promise you it's not a real foot that we're pushing down into the wood chipper but cool you get to get a picture taken there in front of all the fargo artwork and pushing the foot down with a piece of firewood so that's that's definitely a memorable picture you can take when you get there but as i said that's not the only thing in North Dakota, and you're going to find out going through the rest of this page some of the other stuff, such as I've got some downtown pictures showing you the theater downtown, and one of those utility boxes I was talking about that has some of the artwork on it, and I actually found a really cool bike rack down there too, That a series of bike racks that I think you'll find interesting. Photos from the Roger Maris Museum, which are, that is in the um, it's in a shopping center, so it seems like an odd place for a museum, but you, whether the shopping center actually has the museum open or not open, you can still see a whole bunch of memorabilia on the outside. 
I got a picture with the world's largest buffalo. I have a picture of White Cloud, who is the albino buffalo that they feature there. And you can actually, I didn't take a picture because he was so far away, but you can actually go back and look over the field where the albino bison is. And so that's a really cool experience as well. Uh, he was down by the river, so I didn't really get to see it up close, but they do have binoculars there for you to take a look. Also, I went to Minot, and Minot is a place that has a Scandinavian heritage park, and it's just a little city park, and it has all sorts of, um, it has buildings, it has statues, there's a statue of Leif Erikson and of Hans Christian Andersen, and a whole lot of other stuff in there. There's a a Gallstave church there, and a windmill, and a dollar horse, so lots of stuff there to see as well little artwork in downtown Minot that I've also taken a picture of. And also this this theory that North Dakota is flat, it's not flat. Um, Saskatchewan was flat. <laughs> it was very flat. I couldn't believe how flat it was. But North Dakota is all lakes and rolling hills, and it was beautiful. I enjoyed the drive, especially sunrise driving between Minot and Bismarck as I was looking for a bunch of that Lewis and Clark stuff. And so there's a Audubon National Wildlife Refuge out there. And I took a picture of Wally the Walleye in Garrison, North Dakota. You'll get to find out about that in Garrison Dam and um, Fort Clark, which actually I, I didn't see a whole lot of information about that. It's one of those places you kind of have to walk out to and use your imagination on because there's really no, I mean, there it would be hard to preserve a teepee, I'm sure, or any of the Indian dwellings that were out there. But there's enough information on the signposts out there to get you a, a feel of what it was like to be at Fort Clark, which was a major trading post and also was a place where they, they did a lot of fur trade out of there. And then it was also the home for the Indians for hundreds of years before that. And then some photos and information from the Lewis and Clark Interpretive Center. And there's a couple of Indian villages you can check out on the way. And Fort Abraham Lincoln, which has the Onislant Indian village, but is also, it was the home of the 7th Calvary. So anybody who is interested in, you know, what happened during the um, Little Bighorn incident, you can actually see photos of some of the people who were a part of that massacre, not the actual massacre. <laughs> you know, you're not seeing their dead bodies, but you are seeing the photos of them that were taken before they died, uh, you, you know, years or so before a lot of posed pictures and then some histories for each of them. So that was, that was pretty cool. And then Bismarck walked around and there's some street artwork there as well in the Bismarck Alley art that you can check out. And then down by the Heritage Center, there's some statues out there, one of Sacagawea, another of a bison that you can check out. And then I did actually pass by Salem Sioux, the world's largest Holstein cow, and it was sunrise, and she was just peering at me. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll go up there and check it out. And one other thing we didn't really talk about was the Enchanted Highway, which is between Bismarck and Theodore Roosevelt National Park. And that was that was cool. It's all scrap metal that they have turned into art. And you turn down exit 72 and you just ride along and they they just stand out as you're driving along. It's hard to miss because you'll see right when you get off of the uh, freeway, you'll see one right there. And then um, you just drive down this, this road for 32 miles and see a variety of artwork and then the last place that i went to was theodore roosevelt national park and i'm telling you this right now if you if you want to see a hidden gem of the national park system it's theodore roosevelt national park because i've been to the badlands in south dakota and they're beautiful and it's just land formations that take your breath away but there is something about Theodore Roosevelt National Park's Badlands. You see they're green, as she said, 
and it's just so different. But it's beautiful, and they go on and on and on. There's actually two major sections, the North Unit and the South Unit. And I tell a little bit about each of those and show you some pictures from in there. And then I saw a bison. I'd, ra- I'd round a corner, and there are bison just hanging out, like 20 of them. And then go a little bit further down the road, and there's a prairie dog town. And in the prairie dog towns, you can hear all the prairie dogs barking and popping up out of their little holes in the ground and they come right up to the road so you can get some pretty good uh, access to the prairie dogs when you're out there so that was amazing and then I drove north of there because it's about an hour and a half drive to get to the north unit and drove through there and there's just more spectacular scenery and the only thing that made me sad was that at the very end of the drive there was a fire out there at some point, and it, so all of a sudden you go from this beautiful green to just black charred, and that's kind of sad. But that's just the last couple of miles of that drive. The rest of the drive is absolutely spectacular and worth the time to go see. So uh, my mind's been changed on North Dakota. I'm telling you, I, the, the only probably the only boring drive I had was between Jamestown to Minot. She had to take a back road to get there. Still rolling hills, but more farms. And so it was a little bit, you know, that was a two hour drive that I kept going, oh, I'd love to get through this as, as quick as possible. But even driving up by the Williston oil fields and all that through there, there's still you know, of course, there's the curiosity of seeing all the oil wells that are out there working and seeing all the pop-up towns that are there. Uh, you know, we think of ghost towns now from the 1800s where they built structures. The ghost towns of the future probably are going to be abandoned trailers, I guess, because there were motels there that were offering rooms for $25 a night, and you would be staying in a trailer. So that's a a fascinating place to kind of drive through and see. And there's a little more Lewis and Clark stuff that goes on through there. So I had a great time in North Dakota, if you couldn't tell. And so my my mind has changed completely about it. It would not rank as my 50th state, even though it was my last state to go to. So check all that stuff out there. Go to travelfuelslife.com slash North Dakota and check out that blog post and see some of those pictures that I took. And then I also did another post where I wanted to count my 50 states and kind of talk about what my favorite memory or favorite thing was in that particular state. So you can find that at travelfuelslife.com slash 50 states. And you will see that there are a couple states in there where I kind of used them as pass through states. So I'm going to give a little more effort to those states in the future, but I have been through them enough that I feel like I can count them as states. I didn't just go to the airport and then you know, fly out. It was, I drove in, I stayed there at least a night, that sort of thing. So check all that out. I hope you enjoyed this episode and uh, man, I am off the road for a while. I have been going gangbusters for the beginning of the year and I'm sorry I haven't been able to get a podcast every week, but it's just been on the road. It's very hard for me to produce content. So I'm going to get a little more consistent here as we go on through the summertime because I'm going to be planted a little bit more. So I'll be bringing more guests in. And I got so much content that I still need to process. I've been doing a little bit on Ireland and I'm going to start putting out my Scotland Castles and Drams posts. So keep watching on Instagram.com slash Travel Fuels Life and keep watching at Facebook.com slash Travel Fuels Life because I got a whole bunch of stuff that I'm going to be posting out there and also twitter.com slash travel fuels life because there'll be some information out there as well. That's where I have a lot lot of my conversations. So thank you everybody for joining me and I am going to get out of this snow and go enjoy some sunshine tomorrow and head back to Minneapolis and then fly home. So it's been a great trip and I hope you enjoy the content and I'll be back next week with more travel inspiration for you. So join me and thanks for listening to Travel Fuels Life.